was on the call. ACT is a leading online training and certification provider in the healthcare industry. And our goal is to provide quality education that prepares students to excel in the competitive healthcare landscape. Um, we offer simulation-based instructor-led trainings to deliver the best learning experience possible. And students can expect to learn in a very interactive, asynchronous format to gain skills necessary to enter an entry-level healthcare position in as little as eight to 12 weeks while also learning or earning um, nationally accredited certifications. And so with that, we hope that you continue to consider us in your pre-health journey. Now I'd like to turn it over to our speakers for today, Jessica, who is the head of our workforce development programs and Emily, who is one of our clinical educators to kick off today's presentation. So over to you ladies. Oh, you're on mute, Emily. Sorry. Thank you so much, Jani. Jessica, are you able to share your screen? Okay, so welcome everybody. Again, we're here to talk about bridging the gap, student to medical assistant. And um, I'm one of the assistant course instructors, and then we have Jessica, as Jani said. Okay, so for our agenda for today's session, we're going to do some quick introductions and welcome um, to all of you online. We're going to then um, start talking about transitioning from student to the workforce, which is something that commonly comes up as questions when we're interacting with students. Jessica's going to do some great career development highlights and resources, and then we're going to end with an interactive Q&A. Thank you so much, Emily and Jenny, for the introduction. My name is Jessica Angelescu. I'm the head of workforce development here at ACT. I come with uh, over 13 years of background and experience and knowledge into talent acquisition, human resources, and just last year made a transition into career development, professional development, uh, very passionate about healthcare, uh, creating strategies, assisting students, um, in their career goals and in plans and just really ensuring their success. So I would first like to start off with um, a brief intro into our career development department. So the career development department is dedicated to supporting individuals in their professional growth and advancement by providing a range of resources, services, and guidance tailored to the unique needs and aspirations of our students and alumni. Our mission uh, in the department is empowering individuals to navigate their career journey with confidence, resilience, and purpose through personalized guidance, resources, and opportunities. And our vision is to cultivate a dynamic and inclusive community where every individual can unlock their full potential, uh, pursue and fulfill their careers, and contribute meaningfully to the workforce. So before, uh, like I said, before we jump into the Q&A, let's see how uh, our career development can assist you uh, with the transition from a high level. Um, so we offer a range of resources to support our students and alumni uh, in your personal and professional growth from goal setting um, to being an, an alumni. Uh, these resources are definitely essential uh, for staying competitive in today's job market. And by utilizing these offerings, you can gain uh, valuable guidance that's specifically ta tailored to you and your aspirations. You can also stay updated on industry trends and connect with professionals who can offer support and insights. So all in all, Engaging with our career uh, department uh, and resources is crucial for navigating uh, transitions successfully and achieving growth and success in your chosen field. So when you're transitioning from student to the workforce, um, there can be significant shifts in your life. Uh, these mostly involve uh, time and effort adjustments. So when we look at the, the first uh, piece in the transition, this is really about mindset. Uh, and you really wanna focus on academic achievements, 
to really embrace that professional growth and development. It requires an understanding, um, the expectations of the professional world, uh, like adhering to workplace norms, meeting deadlines, and collaborating with colleagues. Uh, secondly, you must learn to translate your academic knowledge and skills into practical, applicable competencies that are relevant to the chosen field, industry, or job specifically. This often uh, involves gaining relevant work experience. Um, you can do this through internships, externships, co-op programs, part-time jobs to really assist you in bridging that gap between academic theory and real world application. And additionally, transitioning from student to employee uh, really involves building that professional network and personal brand. Uh, when we look at um, you know, personal brand, networking is essential, especially in today's market. And it really opens the doors to discovering job opportunities, uh, mentorships and accessing uh, available resources for advancement. You want to be sure that you are creating a strong personal brand with your resume to show your unique skills and experiences to potential employers, but also understand the steps involved in transitioning um, is important. And there are several reasons why. So when we look at those, uh, it helps individuals set realistic expectations and goals um, to align their career and really helps you make informed decisions about your professional development. It also enables you to practically prepare for the challenges and opportunities that will come when you enter the workforce, which will help the likelihood of you feeling overwhelmed or unprepared. And then lastly, Understanding the process really empowers you to take control of your journey, uh, seize any opportunities for growth, and ultimately achieve success in your new role. So when we're looking at the actual steps in transitioning, you first want to gain insight into the various career paths and in industry to be able to make that informed decision about your future. This can include volunteering, mentors, research, and uh, other outlets. Be sure to um, you know, really dive into and look at the effective techniques for setting and achieving your goals. Uh, this will ultimately help you drive that success. You can ask yourself questions like, what are my passions? Uh, what are my career goals? And how do I get there? Also learning the importance of networking and practical methods to expand and leverage your uh, professional connections. You can do this through webinars, uh, events, conferences, or simple uh, outreach on social media and other platforms. But one way to stand out in today's job market and enhancing employability and growth is ensuring you're honing in on the essential skills. So an example would be if you've selected your career, now what? What are the, the soft skills? What are the hard skills? What are the competencies that employers are looking for uh, in the given um, job uh, or industry that you are planning on working in? So when you look at that, you also want to gain practical experience. Um, this is when you uh, learn how the relevant skills and knowledge um, is significant to your role. And uh, through internships, externships, you can really um, impress potential employers with showing your dedication to your career uh, by gaining that experience. You also want to craft an impactful resume, uh, cover letter, and again, your personal brand uh, to really stand out. Um, but you also want to look at finding out what are the most effective strategies and tools um, that's going to help you become the most successful in your job search and uh, kind of tailor that around the positions that you're looking for. Um, one of the, the biggest things um, you can do to help um, with strategies is 
reaching out and connecting uh, with individuals who have a, uh, a current job or previous job uh, for that matter in that field or that specific um, uh, position and kind of talk with them um, about, you know, uh, the different types of questions that you do have that you're unsure about. And eliminating anxiety and nervousness um, to be able to confidently get through job and interviews and leave a lasting impression. Um, this is one of the, the biggest things that I hear from students um, is how, you know, they can't get over the anxiety or the nervousness um, during the interview uh, to be impactful. But with today's technology, there are tons of um, AI and platforms available to assist you with this. Um, there's one that can do interview notes. There's one that can do resumes. There's one that can do mock interviews, um, chat GPT and researching, um, you know, the common interview questions. Um, but the biggest thing that I have seen in the field and for myself is practice, practice, practice. Um, so uh, you can also ask for, for guidance from our career development department, uh, your network, any connections or mentors uh, to assist you in managing um, life from being a student to the professional world and just really overall helping you to adapt. So before we jump into the Q&A, I do want to clarify that the answers that I'm providing you all with today are not specific to any particular organization, employer, clinic. Um, these are just broad, uh, general overview and insights only. Um, and the questions that we will address are uh, centered around what to expect after you go through your job search and you interview and you've accepted the offer. So um, we'll start with you've accepted an offer. Now what? Okay. <clears throat> Our first question, how can I manage the transition from student to employee effectively, both personally and professionally? That's a great question. So really being aware that uh, transitioning involves adjusting to new routines, responsibilities, and expectations. Uh, you really want to um, set realistic goals and timelines for yourself uh, to ensure you don't burn yourself out. So one way to approach this um, is with the growth mindset. So you really want to uh, view the challenges and opportunities for learning and development by being open to new experiences and feedback um, and adapting to the demands of your new role. Uh, these are factors that are essential in your progress. Um, take notes as you go, uh, identify what's working and what's not working and staying curious by asking questions, um, seeking out opportunities and actively pursuing growth opportunities that are aligned uh, with your career goals because this will ultimately aid in your success. Uh, another way is to contact friends, family, mentors, colleagues for support during the transition. You know, um, share your experiences, your concerns uh, with individuals who can, you know, offer guidance and encouragement. Um, you know, the transition can be overwhelming. So you do really want to make sure that you invest the time and effort in being um, building positive relationships and uh, being genuine and interactive and listening actively, asking questions, and just really being collaborative um, to create that supportive environment. One way uh, that I like to do it is establishing a daily routine uh, that incorporates not only work, but also self-care, personal interests, you know, really try to create that schedule so you can have that work-life balance. Uh, with that, you know, um, it can help you maintain balance, manage your time effectively. Uh, I like to use my uh, calendar. I have one calendar that joins all of my calendars into one so I can see when I'm free, when I'm not free. Um, and 
you know, when you're looking at your day to day and saying, ah, I'm stressed out, you know, you really want to establish those boundaries, boundaries, um, practicing mindfulness exercise or relax, uh, relaxation exercises can definitely help. Uh, I like to walk every morning before I start work for 30 minutes and just kind of helps me clear my mind and kind of prepare myself for the day. Uh, you really do want to make sure that you prioritize your self-care by setting that time aside uh, to avoid overcommitting yourself, um, feeling overwhelmed, and, and being burnout. Absolutely. I love what you said about self-care. That often gets so low on our priority list, and it should be the top one. Love that. Okay. How long does the onboarding process typically take? So from a general uh, perspective, the duration of onboarding uh, can vary depend depending on a few different factors, um, the complexity of the role, the organization structure, and individual's progress. Um, in healthcare specifically, the onboarding process can take anywhere from a week to months, depending on the employer and state requirements. Um, so with that being said, I do want to kind of talk about tips and tricks to kind of navigate that process effectively um, to stay engaged and excited. Uh, so during on um, onboarding, there is a part of the process called orientation, and this can take you through um, typically the onboarding process for the role. Uh, it really gives you a clear idea of what to expect and just help you plan accordingly. Um, I personally print everything off. Um, so as I get things done, I like to check mark them off um, or an Excel sheet. Uh, so I just kind of make a full on list and mark them off as I go. Uh, you really want to make sure that you're keeping track of milestones, deadlines, training sessions throughout this process. Um, you can use, uh, again, the checklist or a calendar to ensure you are completing the task in a timely manner. You can also set calendar reminders uh, to keep track of dates during the process. And, you know, if you're ever unsure, you really want to make sure that you're asking questions when you are unsure of what to do or what steps need to be completed. There are available resources and support systems to facilitate your onboarding experience. Um, you're typically paired with uh, a human resources or HR representative that will work with you through the process to make sure you have all of your documents and items um, in place and in on time. Um, they often provide it through email. Um, this can include training materials any types of programs, um, contact information for the HR representative. Uh, but looking at the onboarding process as a whole, you want to be sure that you are adaptable to the changes, um, any unforeseen challenges that can arise during the onboarding process, um, especially in healthcare. Um, my experience has been, most of my 13 years of experience has been in medical scribe companies. Um, so I've kind of seen how things can arise um, and how they vary uh, from employer to employer. So you can really use this onboarding process and period as an opportunity to connect with um, the HR representative, uh, colleagues, and establish those relationships A lot of good information. You don't know what you don't know. So you don't know what you don't know. And it, it can really be a lot, especially in the healthcare field. That's kind of why I keep reiterating that. Um, so just stay yeah. encouraged and engaged and excited. It's a super important point. Okay. So we touched on this a little bit, but what should I expect during the new employee orientation process? Yeah, so during the orientation, um, this can be uh, either on site or conducted virtually. 
Um, I've seen hybrid models also uh, with the changes that COVID brought to companies. But um, in the orientation uh, specifically, you're going to learn about the organization's history, missions, values, their culture. Um, you'll also uh, likely complete paperwork related to your employment, credentialing, payroll, benefits, any HR processes that you need to read over and acknowledge. You'll also, especially in healthcare, um, have to present items like vaccinations, immunization records, you'll complete background checks. Um, some employers um, do drug screening, and these are just some uh, examples. Some companies still do reference checks, so really depending on what the requirements are. You'll uh, also receive information on company policies, code of conduct, safety regulations, uh, be sure to pay attention to the details um, and again, ask questions uh, when you're unclear. Uh, during orientation, you'll also learn about any available resources, support systems, or channels for assistance that you can utilize. Uh, again, may include an HR representative, mentor. Um, some uh, employers also have employee assistance programs. Um, so uh, just make sure you take time to introduce uh, yourself a little bit about who you are and the role you play. Um, often orientation will include training sessions uh, for on the job specific tasks, company procedures, uh, safety protocols. You'll familiarize yourselves with the tools and technologies used in your role, such as um, software systems like EMRs, EHRs, medical equipment, uh, communication platforms. Um, one thing I have learned is if you have, uh, for instance, an IT issue, um, make sure you reach out um, immediately to get that resolved. Um, you'll also uh, get acquainted with your workspace, especially if you're working on site. Um, take a tour of the facilities, where's the break room, where's the lunch room, where are the patient rooms, and where uh, equipment is also. Okay, well, I have a designated mentor or buddy to guide me through the initial stages. Great, great, great question. So um, if the organization does have a formal mentorship or buddy system, um, you first thing you want to do is really understand the expectations and the responsibilities of your mentor or your buddy. Um, things like how often you'll meet, what topics or areas that they can assist you with. But once you do, um, you know, get paired with a buddy, you want to make sure that you introduce yourself. Um, and if a meeting is not scheduled, take the initiative to go ahead and schedule it. And use that as an opportunity to get to know each other, discuss your goals, and really establish that uh, relationship. You want to make sure that you also communicate openly um, throughout the onboarding process if you're introduced that early. Uh, some employers will wait until after, uh, more with the training um, to get you onboarded with your buddy. Uh, during this time, you can talk about challenges, questions, where you need support, uh, but just make sure that you're open and receptive to their, their guidance and feedback. Um, you know, working with your, um, your mentor or your buddy to really set those clear objectives um, and goals for your onboarding period. Uh, this can be mastering specific skills. Uh, within the, the clinic, uh, understanding the processes, um, and just really how to build that um, relationship with other coworkers. You really want to also um, take advantage of them in their expertise and the knowledge in the organization. Uh, they often can provide um, tips and tricks uh, they can introduce you to key stakeholders and really help you uh, navigate the company culture more effectively. So you also want to periodically reflect on this relationship and evaluate whether or not it's being effective. 
um, considering what's working well, what can be improved, um, any communication adjustments or additional support that you may need. And as always, you want to make sure that you express um, appreciation and gratitude for the guidance and support provided by the mentor or buddy. Um, a simple thank you can go a long way in uh, nurturing a positive and mutually beneficial relationship. And lastly, uh, you want to make sure that you pay it forward. So as you become more experienced in your role, um, consider, you know, being a mentor yourself to those who are new to the organization, really sharing your knowledge and experiences can uh, create an environment of learning and support. What training programs or resources are available to help me adapt to my new role? So some of the resources available are the job specific training. Um, this can include instruction on using specific tools, software, equipment relevant to your position. Uh, there also may be shadowing opportunities where you can observe experienced colleagues in action, gain hands on experience. Uh, to learn the best practices of the office or the clinic and gain uh, real insights on day-to-day -day tasks. Some employers do have online learning platforms that can offer uh, courses that are relevant to your field or your job role. Um, they can also have internal training materials, manuals and resources, um, policies, procedures, protocols, um, that they do um, not necessarily pass out, but provide you uh, during the onboarding orientation and training. Um, at this point, uh, you know, you can ask about the, the mentorship or buddy system um, to help you navigate through the process. Uh, you can um, ask your supervisor uh, for feedback um, on your performance, ask for, you know, uh, what am I doing well? What could I work on? Um, this can be a really great and proactive way to um, tailor your learning and development and your goals while addressing any gaps in your skills or knowledge. Um, you can also uh, be proactive and seek out resources and opportunities uh, for skills and uh, development yourself. Um, to, you could do a simple Google search, you know, your position title and learning opportunities, or if you know some areas specifically, you can just um, Google free training resources for X, Y, and Z. Um, but again, you want to make sure that you do set time aside for yourself so you uh, don't become overbooked and burnt out. Uh, what are key policies and procedures I should be aware of as a new medical assistant? Yes, these. Okay, so uh, the first one we want to talk about is HIPAA compliance. It stands for Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act. Uh, these are regulations regarding patient privacy and confidentiality. You really need to understand the importance of safeguarding patient information in following the HIPAA guidelines in all interactions. You'll learn about infection control uh, protocols um, to prevent the spread of infections in healthcare settings. Uh, some examples could be proper hand hygiene, personal protective equipment or PPE, uh, disinfectant uh, procedures. You'll also learn about documentation. Um, each Clinic can have different ways that they uh, use the electronic medical record or EMR um, systems. I know some clinics still use paper charting, um, but you're not likely to see it that often. Um, but some examples are uh, patient information, treatments, interventions. You do really want to make sure that these are documented um, timely and accurately. So uh, you'll also familiarize yourself with the organization's code of ethics and professional standards. Um, examples are integrity, honesty, respect, uh, patient autonomy. You have to ensure that it 
in all interactions. You'll also look at and review and sign off on safety regulations and protocols uh, just to ensure a safe environment for patients, colleagues, and yourself. Uh, some examples are handling of hazardous materials, emergency response procedures. Another key policy is scope of practice. So um, know the task and responsibility that you are authorized to perform um, and what those require um, if they do require a licensed healthcare provider to be with you. Uh, medication handling and administration um, in relation to medical storage, preparation, administration, documentation, any emergency response protocols, um, including CPR, first aid, medical emergencies. Uh, most times um, employers will provide regular training and drills to ensure that you maintain your readiness for any emergencies. Another one is um, understanding and respecting patients' rights, including uh, consent, confidentiality, and respectful treatment. So some examples of that one could be um, patients' needs, their preferences, uh, in professional boundaries. And then any continuing education requirements. Um, some companies do have a set of uh, required trainings that um, they'll provide you uh, on a yearly basis, um, confidentiality, HIPAA, things of that nature that they do provide. Okay, how can I best integrate into the existing team and establish effective communication with colleagues? That's a good one. Yes. So you really want to sit back, observe, and listen. You want to um, make sure that you're really paying attention to the team's communication styles, preferences, and dynamics. Um, I know we talked about this before, but introducing yourself, making sure you are approachable. Uh, share a little bit of information about yourself, expressing uh, your enthusiasm for training the team. Again, feel free to ask questions when you need clarification. Um, this really shows that you're interested in learning and contributing um, to the, uh, the ways of the communication um, within your team. And always be open, approachable, um, so that your colleagues can approach you with questions or concerns or any ideas that they may have. Uh, another thing in communication is um, make sure it's clear and concise. Uh, you want to use straightforward language, avoid jargon or technical terms. Um, it can be misunderstood or not understood. Um, so just really ensure you're communicating in a, a clear way. Uh, you also want to be respectful of um, anyone that you work with and their diverse uh, backgrounds, perspectives, and communication styles. Uh, one thing that um, I've been taught is uh, really adapting how you communicate with an individual um, based on how they want to interact with you. Um, and then really actively participating um, in any meetings, discussions, or activities. Um, be sure to contribute your ideas, insights, and any expertise that you have um, to uh, really encourage everyone to do the same. Um, I've been in plenty of um, work meetings where nobody talks until one person talks and then they all start talking. So, um, just be the one that, you know, opens up and initiates and, and starts the conversation. Um, you really want to be sure that you do take interest in, you know, individuals that you work with, their interests, hobbies, personal lives. Um, this can really connect you um, on a personal level when you find that common ground. Um, make sure you follow up and follow through on, on conversations any requests that have been made or action items that you're responsible for, 
uh, to demonstrate reliability and accountability. Um, examples of, uh, you know, any progress you've made on XYZ task, any changes made um, to a process or any updates that you have um, to keep everyone in, informed and on the same page. And you really want to make sure that you acknowledge and celebrate your team's uh, success and achievements. Um, I've always said to, you know, celebrate every win, no matter how big or how small. Um, but overall, you really want to ensure that you maintain professional um, in all communications and workplace interactions, um, even in challenging and stressful situations, um, making sure that you're handling any disagreements or conflicts respectfully, um, seeking resolution if you need to get a supervisor involved, if you need to get HR involved. Uh, definitely do so um, when the situation arises uh, and not later um, later on. Okay, what are the expectations regarding professionalism and conduct in the workplace? Yeah, so the first one is your, the dress code. Um, you want to make sure that you're following the policy uh, for your workplace, ensuring that um, it reflects professionalism and respect for the environment. Uh, most typically in healthcare, um, they'll have uh, a particular color or they provide you with or you have to purchase um, scrubs. But um, kind of depends on, you know, what the policy is. Um, you also want to make sure that you arrive on time for work meetings and appoint, uh, appointments. So be punctual, make sure you're attending work, um, notify anyone if you're going to be tardy, but, you know, don't go overboard and be tardy every day. Uh, this will, you know, show the employer that you are reliable, you have respect for other people's time, and you're fully committed. So when it comes to um, communicating, uh, be professional, respectful um, with anybody. This includes coll colleagues, supervisors, patients, and anybody else. Uh, using courteous language, active listening skills, and the appropriate channels of communication. Uh, you want to make sure you uphold ethical standards and integrity in all your interactions and decisions. Uh, some examples would be patient confidentiality, the professional uh, codes of conduct that the employer has, uh, avoiding conflicts of interest or any uh, unethical behaviors. And um, when it comes to handling the, the conflicts or, you know, um, any disagreements, uh, you really want to take steps to um, listen actively to you know what the person is saying, seek a common ground and work towards um, mutually beneficial resolutions. Um, but again, remaining professional and respectful. You can also um, expect to demonstrate adaptability and flexibility in responding to changes, challenges, and any new initiatives in the workplace. Um, you can do this by embracing the change in a positive manner, um, seek opportunities for growth, um, seek uh, clarifications on anything that makes you feel uneasy or that um, you don't feel like you know. Uh, but also being open to, you know, learning and developing yourself. And you also want to take responsibility for your actions, decisions, and outcomes. Um, follow through on what you've committed to in regards to, you know, deadlines, um, progress, updates. Really strive for excellence um, while, you know, holding yourself accountable. You want to encourage continuous learning and professional development uh, to uh, develop your skills, abilities. Uh, you can ask supervisors, pursue uh, training opportunities that you find yourself, um, but always seek to you know, improve yourself 
uh, from a personal and professional standpoint. Okay, what opportunities exist for advancement or further education within this organization? So, um, I think I have a typo, so I do apologize. Um, so this should be uh, opportunities that exist for um, further education uh, within the organizations, um, meaning the employers that you work with. So uh, some companies have and some companies don't, or they have a little bit. Um, if they do have um, opportunities for advancement or further education, uh, this could be a career development program. Um, these are designed to support employees' growth and advancement. Uh, these can include mentorship initiatives, uh, leadership development courses, tuition reimbursement uh, to further your education. Another way is to keep out um, an eye out for internal job postings uh, that align with your career goals and interest. You can uh, directly apply for those opportunities uh, for advancement to really allow you to expand your skills and re uh, responsibilities within the organization. You can also uh, actively participate in performance reviews, uh, assess your progress, receive feedback, and discuss the opportunities uh, for growth. Uh, typically, this is done with a supervisor. Um, you can use these uh, discussions to outline your career goals and aspirations uh, with your supervisor. Um, they can also go further and say, okay, we're gonna do X, Y, and Z trainings. This will get you to the position that you want to get to. Um, and it's just uh, really a, a goal setting um, of where you're at, where you want to be with a company. You can also engage in networking opportunities um, to connect with colleagues um, in the field, um, coworkers, key stakeholders. Um, and you can often see um, mentors. Um, you can see career advice, uh, as well as other advancement opportunities. Um, a lot of employers do post um, new uh, job opportunities on social media also. Uh, some employers may have the any training uh, and certification programs, um, acquiring new certifications or specialized training can really increase your markability and eligibility uh, for promotions or um, lateral moves. Uh, some companies also have um, volunteer where they take a day and they go volunteer for the Red Cross or um, Feed the Hungry um, or internal um, projects that you're working, that they're working on. And this will really allow you to collaborate uh, with the different departments um, in, the, in the organization, can help broaden your skill set, um, increase your visibility in the organization, and really position you for future advancement opportunities. So you can also stay informed um, about organizational changes, strategic initiatives, and upcoming opportunities. Um, some employers will send out emails, they'll do newsletters, they can post it on their career website. Um, you can attend company meetings um, and again, social media, a lot of employers are moving to post um, a lot of great information online nowadays. Okay, what resources are available for support and feedback as I settle into my role? Excellent question. So. Your supervisor is typically your, um, your first go-to and primary resource for support and feedback. Um, most employers, they'll schedule regular check-ins weekly or bi-weekly, uh, kind of depending on the clinic. Again, policies, procedures, protocols. Um, this is the time when you want to ask questions, uh, get guidance on any job-related matters, um, but this will really help you uh, build support uh, for your colleagues as well and your peers. Um, they're a good resource to ask for support, insights, um, 
as well as uh, any advice that they may have um, from their experience. And if they have a mentorship program, uh, you know, definitely that's a great way to, to get settled in. Um, and uh, again, they can provide the guidance, share expertise and offer support and uh, navigating your career development. The HR department can also uh, be a resource um, to assist any uh, matters related to benefits, policies, procedures. Um, they can support with administrative tasks, any employee relations issues, and any development opportunities. Um, again, if available, uh, training and development programs. Um, this can include workshops, seminars, online courses, or certification programs that are relevant for your role. We did talk about employee assistance programs or AEPs a little bit before, um, but they offer confidential support and resources for personal and professional challenges. Uh, this can include counseling services, stress management techniques, work-life balance strategies, um, so you can really utilize these services if the organization has them to address any concerns or difficulties that you may encounter. Um, you can join professional associations or industry groups related to your field. Uh, again, social media, um, they offer uh, opportunities within networking, educational resources, and forums uh, where they share best practices um, and Q&A and advice from peers. But all in all, you really wanna make sure that you are um, taking time to self-reflect and assess and evaluate your progress, your strengths and your areas for development. Um, and then based off that, you know, set uh, personal goals, track your achievements, celebrate your achievements, um, and identify strategies for continuous improvement. So that's it for our Q&A. Uh, thank you once again for um, being with us. Uh, we definitely look forward to accompanying you on your path to success. Um, if you have any questions or would like uh, further details about uh, services offered, um, I put our uh, contact information on here as well as our um, job board so that you can uh, jump on there, see what jobs are available. Um, but uh, together, we can shape a brighter future for healthcare professionals everywhere. Thanks so much, Jess, for the wealth of information you just shared, as well as you, Emily. Um, I also posted the link to our job board on the chat. Also monitoring the Q&A bar. I don't see any questions, so just want to give folks on the call a few minutes to um, add your questions in the chat. If there are no questions, just want to quickly put a plug in for our upcoming webinar that sort of expands on some of the things Jess just talked about in this session. And it's around really crafting the perfect resume to get attentions of employers. So we'll go over components of a great resume, sort of how to leverage LinkedIn for networking and really take advantage of your network. We hope to see you all at that webinar. It is scheduled for Friday at noon Eastern Standard Time. Um, so still monitoring the chat for questions. I don't see any. So any final words for our participants, Emily or Jess? Happy Wednesday. I know that was a lot of information we shared. Um, but again, if you need anything at all, do not hesitate to reach out to us. Um, we're, we're always available. Um, to support uh, your adventure moving forward. Absolutely. Use our contact info if you need anything at all. Of course. Thank you both so much for your time and thanks everyone who was able to join us for the call today. Hope you have a good rest of your day and looking forward to seeing you all on Friday. Thank you. Bye.